we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, Official Miss Jamaica, what's going on? No, 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 my dad. Man, hey, man, listen, man. This old boy right here, man, you know this nigga right here. You know what? <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> See, y'all don't be knowing how to do no interviews. I, I got this interview stuff down pat. Oh, man. Yeah. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Say it, man. Listen, man. Yes, sir. Blood Rod's in the building, man. Stop playing, y'all. Better stand up, applaud, all that other stuff. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, man. I'm a big fan of, of the music, man, the hip-hop sure. culture, man. Right. And, and, man, you guys had a hell of a run, man. Definitely. For real, man. So right. thank you for coming to Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. I you appreciate here, baby. It. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I appreciate y'all, for real, so, for real. First thing I want to know, why the name Blood Raw? Um, see, in, in Florida, Blood Raw's a sling. It stands for the truth. Really? Yeah, so if I gave it to you in a sentence, like, I'm going to give it to you blood raw, meaning the absolute uh, truth. You feel me? Okay, because I was like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't no, <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't no gang affiliate. You feel me? <laughs> well, when I was growing up, we didn't have gangs in Florida. You feel me? So Really? Nah, 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 nah. They just came, you know, either somebody came from Cali or somewhere else and, you know, created something. But in Florida, you know, we, we maybe was beefing with each other from across town or something like that. But we never really had no gangs. Mm. Let's go down through there. So, okay, so you're originally born and raised in Florida. Yeah. What part? Panama City. Oh, okay. Oh, really? the yeah. Beaches are beautiful. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I live across the bridge. We don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I was growing up, I ain't see the beach like that. Really? Nah, 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 nah. No, nah, people nah. think that everybody in Florida, the beaches are right. everywhere. Right, 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 right. And it's always the bridge that separates the hood from the beaches, so. Oh, and the, and so the hood don't have no beaches? Nah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. That's sad. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. So, what are your fondest memories of Florida? Um, growing up, say from up till say I want to okay, I want it in stages. What's your fondest memory before ten? Before ten. Um, playing sports. What sport? Football, baseball. I did it all. Oh, you did it all. Yeah. Were you good at any oh, of them? Definitely. I definitely was good. I mean, if I would have stayed on the right track, I probably could have been something like you feel me, mm -hmm. like no, like not just talking, but for real, for real, you know. Really? Yeah, 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 for real, for real. And siblings? Um, I have one sister. One sister, older. Yeah, she older, yeah. My. Oh, okay. Was she in sports too? Yeah, she was cheer. Cheerleader. So she yeah. was cheering you on while you were playing. Well, she was in older grade, so you know. But okay. Yeah, she knew her brother was raw. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What is another fun memory in your teenage? You know, our crucial time is our teenage years. Right. Do you have a fond memory in teenage years? Um, I mean, just being in the streets, to be honest. You feel me? Um, mm -hmm. I went to prison when I was 16, so, you know, uh, I kind of grew up different than the average, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, kid. My mother yeah. died when I was 10, wow. bad overdose of heroin, you know what I'm saying? So I just was really off the chain ever since then, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was raised by my grandma. My, actually, before my mom went to prison at 10, she was, I mean, before she died at, when I was 10, she went to prison twice. Mm. So every time my mom went to prison, me and my sister, we got separated. That's how I was able to go from different sides of towns because when my mom would go to prison, my sister would stay with my grandma and I go to my auntie house, which they lived on different sides they of towns. They couldn't handle both of y'all at the same time. Not at the same time, you know what I'm saying? And my grandma, she worked long hours, like from nine in the morning to 10 at night. So it was like, you know, she needed, she needed help. But once your mama came home, she would take both of y'all, although she was an addict, she still would help. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I went everywhere my mama went. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally. Like, everybody, all the older people, they know me because I was with my mama everywhere. So she could function. Oh, yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. You know what I'm saying? Back then, heroin was pretty much like a social drug. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, you were strung out. Like, strung they were still out. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just, you know, unfortunately... Somebody gave her a bad overdose, just like the Fed now that's going around now. Right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, where's yeah. daddy during this time? I never met my dad until I was probably like 20 some years old. Did you know who he was growing nah, up? No, ne I never knew who he was. You know what I'm saying? Did you until ever I got ask, older. When you were younger, did you ask your grandma? Because I know your mom was, or your mom or anybody, like, you know, I know I must have a daddy. I don't right. But see, I'm going to tell you this like, I never had that feeling. Never. Because I was, no, because I was so surrounded by love. Mm -hmm. I was raised by women. 
Mm-hmm. So I was surrounded by love. I never really even had a, you know, thoughts in my mind like where my daddy at because I had so much love going on. I really didn't want or, f- or had a need to say that I wanted my daddy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I always I know wonder, it's kind of strange, but yeah, I never I can, really. I can understand what you're saying, but then for a, a boy, and you know, when you're a kid, you, you're not seeing this part of it. Yeah. But as a boy, I'm always thinking a woman can't teach a boy how to become a man. So as much as we women supposed to nurture you, show you the, the sensitive side, show you how to be caring, loving, all of that. Mm-hmm. But a man need to come in and show you how to be rough and tough and supply for your family, how to treat a woman, all of that other stuff. But I, I, I honestly, I think that it's, it's just depend on the person. Because me, I have all the characteristics of everything. Like I have the sensitive side. And I had a street side. Mm-hmm. My mom was in the streets, like for real. But I still, I mean, naturally, I'm a, I'm an affectionate person. I'm a caring person. Like, you feel me? I have mm-hmm. real morals. Like, I was raised by my grand, my grandma. Like, I'ma always say yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Like, I'ma treat women as queens because that's what I was taught. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing I seen was women in my family, and you know, I, I know that I love my family, my aunties, my, my sisters, my sister, my cousins, like. So I know that, you know what I'm saying, whatever I do affects women, I got to look at how somebody going to treat my family. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how did you receive your father once he came into your life, and how did he come into your life? Um, actually, I was on the road from doing a show. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I talked about it. You know what I'm saying? I talked about going to see my daddy or whatever. Um, and I, actually, I was raised in Orange Memorial, which is Orlando. Mm-hmm. But my, my daddy family, my grandma and my granddaddy, they from... Haines City, Florida. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Which mm-hmm. is Polk County. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as a kid, and this was crazy for me to even have the remembrance of certain things as a kid. Because I was only in Haines City up until three months year, three months old. And you remember that? And I remember my grandmother. Was that the only time you met her was when you were that yeah, young? Yeah, I, I never met them at all. But I guess... From conversation, probably, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying about my grandma Jim and you know my dad or whatever. But right. I was on um, I was on the road coming from a show and we seen the sign that said Hain City, Florida. So me and my DJ, my homeboy, which is like kind of like my brother, um, and my other homeboy, we was in the car and we was like, man, I say Hain City, like you want to go try to find your daddy, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, let's do it, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So we actually pulled up to the hood in Hain City. The very first guy we seen, we asked that you know, because they called my daddy Bounty Hunter. So you knew the name? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a junior. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a junior. So we asked the guy, did he know um, where Bounty Hunter lived? And then he was like, his daddy lived on, you know, up, up on the hill at the house. So we went to the house. Um, I knocked on the door, and my granddaddy, he was living there. My granddaddy came to the door, and he, he looked at me like, <laughs> he looked at me because like. you he, look just like your daddy. Right. And he was like, is that my grandson? You know what I'm saying? So they like, knew of you. Yeah, they definitely knew of me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and long story short, I met my dad. He act like, you know, he never missed a beat. You know what I'm saying? And me, I'm grown, I'm older now, so I don't have the resentment as much anymore. But mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just glad to see this. You know what I'm saying? So I give him a hug, get a little emotional, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I give him my number, tell him to keep in contact, you feel me, or whatever. Um, so... You know, I guess it. You know, him being older, his pride was in the way for the most part for not being in my life. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, he probably wasn't where he was at, Bell what Harry. he wanted to be. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, didn't keep in contact like I wanted him to, but I did my part. You know what I'm saying? So up until last year, we seen each other three times, mm. right? And last year, April, I was recording my documentary, so we went filmed a little bit. Not even 30 days later, my daddy died. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He found out he was a diabetic, and instantly, instantly, he he it, it must have done something to him because mm-hmm. he didn't last 30 days. So mentally, you think it messed with yeah, him? Yeah, I think yeah. it did because they found him in the house in the chair. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because so, a lot of people feel like, especially men, um, I've heard people say, like, whenever they think about diabetes, thinking about, oh, they're going to cut off my leg, they're going to cut off my arm. Yeah. That, you know, some stuff going to start going bad. Yeah. But, you know, people have lived with that, with that for I'm a, a I'm a, I'm a li- last year, after he passed. You got it checked. I got it checked. And they said I was high-risk diabetes. Yeah, diabetes. Pre, pre, yeah. So you guess what? Risk. I just changed my eating. Yeah, that's all you got to do. I only drink water. I don't drink no sodas, no juices. If I drink juice, it's from, the, it's from the vegetables. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
but my my blood sugar levels is 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 perfectly fine. Like you know what I'm saying. I I definitely watch what I eat. I don't eat no sweets like that no more. You know what I'm saying, and uh, everything is, is is perfect. You know what I'm saying. That's I, why I tell. Sorry, hold on. Ahead. That's why I tell people all the time because you know what, you have so many people who are like you or don't know their daddy, don't, don't know their mom, mainly their daddy. Yeah. And I'm like, you need to reach out. You need to find out not only just to build that relationship, but to know what illness is. Yeah, your what, health what history. Health is history because yeah. when you go to your doctor and they say, okay, so what does your daddy have? What do you, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But if you can pick it on it early, the doctors know what to check because when you go get a checkup, yeah. they don't just check everything. Right. They just do their, you know, scan through whatever, but if they don't know the history, they can't say, okay, I need to check on this. Exactly. We need to, you see what I mean? Yeah. I want to talk about um, 16 years old. Right. Doing, going to prison. Yeah. Like five years. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what happened. Can we talk about that? Oh, yeah. yeah of course. Of course. Um, so I had called a trafficking charge. Okay. Um, and... Well, actually, when I got back in town, the DEA had a raid set up for when when we came to the house or whatever. Um, it was me and one of my other homeboys, but he was an older guy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for the long for the long story short, they really wanted me to tell on him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I was a minor at the time. I was a youth youth offender. You know what I'm saying? They just waved me over to an adult. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so you got I, charged as a, an adult. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know when you when you become sixteen, you know what I'm saying. As soon as you turn seventeen, they can they can wave you over to an adult. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they especially do it more the frequently Florida. when you're a brother, when you're of color. Of course, of course, of course. I had an illegal guideline sentence. That's what the five years with ten years probation was. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and during this time they had game time in in Florida, whereas you probably could get. You know, for me, I got a set release date, but they was giving out like 300 days a week or 200 and some days a week. So if you had five years, you'd probably be home in six, seven months. But they gave me a, a five years, do two years, you know what I'm saying, control release date. So I had to automatically do two years, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But when I got out, I was on 10 years probation, which was a, an illegal guideline sentence. Because, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, I never ever really been in trouble like that. You know, of course, I had a couple charges on my on my history, but I didn't score out to nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Were you in school at this time, or you had dropped out? I had dropped out. But when See, you they look at all of that. But, yeah. but when you went to prison, being 16, yeah, what was that like? I mean, it was it it, it was for me. It was you, you know you're a street nigga. Though. Yeah, it was. See, I already know nigga street nigga. He <laughs> went in that thing. You know what I'm saying? But you so, knew so, some then, people in there. Oh yeah yeah yeah. But but see, but you're 16. Two, yeah. You know what I mean? When you go through the reception centers, you you be with the adults, but when you go to prison, you be with twenty five and under. But twenty five and under is more ruthless than than an adult they're prison hot -headed. because everybody is. We we always had riots, you know what I'm saying? We always had riots. It's always gonna be a riot. It's always gonna be people who click up like you know from North Florida to South Florida, you know what I'm saying? Central Florida, they they in clicks or whatever. But but how many sixteen year olds you saw in there? A lot. Really? But yeah. But I want to know yeah. uh, for my prison confessions. I want to mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Give me a story where something happened in there that sticks out to you. One of the craziest episodes that you experienced, being good or bad. Good uh, or bad. Well, well, they had it. They had this prison. It's a um, it's a diagnostic center where everybody go. But it's called Lake Butler, Florida. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's what death. Row, it's what a death row in Florida as well. Um, and they had a thing about people who come there with gold teeth. Okay. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they really kind of want to make an example because they know that you sh you're a street dude or whatever. You feel me? So when you come in the reception center, they automatically, they bring a jar out with gold teeth in the jar where they done kicked it out or knocked it out of certain people. You feel me? This prison even got their own graveyard. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Damn. Yeah, but you always hear about stories, but me being there, like when they come, when they come, when they have you in the, come in they have you take your take your clothes off take your boxes off have you turn around bend over really? you know what I'm saying just the intimidation on a whole nother level you know what I'm saying and they tell you about you know you get out of line we're gonna slap you we're gonna you know what I'm saying all this you feel me um and they kind of they kind of try to put that fear in you off rip you know what I'm saying so I remember one day I'm coming from the child hall you know and back then I ain't really listen to nothing like you feel me like you know whether you it was a police, yeah. Whether it was a police officer, or whoever, like, if you trying to talk to me crazy, I'm gonna pretty much laugh. Like, I ain't take you serious. You know what I'm saying? But I'm coming from the child hall, 
and uh, they don't want you running on the steps. Like, you feel me? So I'm kind of late getting back to the, to my dorm or whatever. Still got food in my hand and everything. You don't supposed to bring no food out y'all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I still got food in my hand. So as I come in the, in the stairs to go up to the dorm, I'm running upstairs and the officer is waiting up up the up the next stair. So he turned around and, and pushed me. So I like almost fell. You know what I'm saying? So he like, get back outside, you know what I'm saying? To sweep the sidewalk to the sun go down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Well you say sweep the sun off the sidewalk, so that means to it go down, you feel me? So I was out there for about four hours, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Like How much like, sweeping can you do? That's just what they do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they like like they just that's just I what do. they do. Are they watching you to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Oh, Can yeah, they're definitely going to be watching. They're definitely going to be watching you. You know what I'm saying? Then you got you got female officers who really, like, try to trap you because they'll be looking at you. And then one of the male yeah, officers, yeah. one of the male officers when you get say mad. trap you, what you mean? Like, they, you they're know how women to get are flirting. You. They flirting they, at you. Yeah, trying yeah. to get with you. I'm just checking. Yeah, they be. No, be, but they really, they can look at you over yeah. there. They don't even have to give you none. They just put the eyes exactly, on you. Exactly, yeah. And a nigga, you know, over there, they they call it uh, gun slanging. So, yeah. All that gun <laughs> slanging going on down there. These <laughs> niggas is really out there, really, you know, yeah. They would have. Yeah. I'll never forget a story I heard yeah. where a nigga act like he would really get into it. And I'm like I'm thinking these niggas Really leaving And having sex With these women Yeah But these niggas Was gunslingers They was gunslingers Yeah they go in the stall And <laughs> yeah they just, All they gotta do Is see the booth Yeah They gonna see the booth They gonna undress you, you like, know, and For they, real They can just see they your go, eyes yeah. They don't care They, they gonna undress you They bro. don't need Nothing but a piece I'm of telling you <laughs> Your boy's imagination Through the roof <laughs> Wow <laughs> Man they have Old sheet over mm -hmm. Walking around Come on mm -hmm. now Don't do that they so, maybe yeah. in the, nigga may be in the shower for hours. Hours, <laughs> yeah. These niggas tripping, man. So did you, fin did you finish with your story that you swept it? Is there anything else that happened after that? Um, no, well, it, it didn't jump on you, or nothing. So you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, he didn't jump on me. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but this is this is a real crazy story. Before I went to prison, though, like when they wanted to tell him, wanted me to tell him a home, but like they used to like take books and put it against your face, like and, and beat you, like. You know what I'm saying? Wow! Like that's huh? what, yeah. The, like the task force, the DA, yeah, yeah. The we call them the task force because it's a drug unit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, they used to put books on you and, and like beat literally you. beat you. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm a jit. Like you feel me? Like you went through a lot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man, man, <laughs> hey, man. We glad, we glad they didn't, they didn't take you out. Man. Oh yeah, for that's sure, the for most sure. important thing. Yeah. Cause God had a plan. Oh for yeah, for sure. He See, always God had already a had a yeah. plan for you. Definitely, definitely. And I knew, you know, cause you can tell where you went when you came home. Right. Yeah. You, it was something God had for you in order for you to even get there. You, but you had to go through something. Oh yeah, you definitely got to go through it. To get something. to it. Yeah, definitely. You see what I'm saying? You got to go through something to get yeah. to something, man. You gotta believe so, it. I guess we can talk about the music a little bit. Let's Go get to ahead. it. Go you know ahead. what I'm saying? Uh, uh, man, USDA, man. Come on, man. CTE, yes, sir. man. What, man? Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, how did you meet... Jeez, anyway, I want to yeah. go into the good parts right, and right, the right. bad. Nigga, don't need good. nothing out. No, no, no. Blood raw, no, no, no. I want it all. Sure. How old were sure. you? Um... Hmm. Cause you did time came back out and that's when well, you. Well, he it. came out. He was 16, like, 17, 18, yeah, but, 19, but I went 20. to prison again after the end. So damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to prison again after the end. So you didn't learn your lesson the first time. Well, I, like I told that you, that probation, like, it was, a trap. Yeah, yeah, that probation. Like when I got it's out, it's a trap. You know what I'm saying? I, I really said to be honest. Fuck it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. Just catch me when you catch me. That's what you say <laughs> when you're 20, 20, 22 years exactly, old, nigga, yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, long story short, after I came home from prison my second time, I moved to Atlanta, right? Okay. So, because my sister didn't want me in, in my hometown no more, because she already knew what I was going to do. You feel me? So and I moved to Atlanta. How old were you when you got out the second time? My second time, probably like 20 something, like 23. Okay. Damn. You know what I'm saying? years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I moved to Atlanta. Um, and my uncle them they had a restaurant called the Hip Hop Cafe. What year was this? Probably like, hmm. So I got my deal in two thousand five. So this had to be in like two thousand three. Two thousand three, yeah. BMF was still oh, yeah, around. Definitely. Yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get there yeah, where yeah. you at. For I'm, sure, trying, for sure. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Now, yeah. you are on there. You didn't hit Atlanta. Oh, yeah. All the butt naked clubs. Yeah, definitely. Was, was the, was the uh, lap dancer still $10 at that time? Sometimes five. Okay, that's, <laughs> a, that's, that's what I'm talking about, yeah, baby. Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my uncle them, they had a spot called the Hip Hop Cafe where it, all the artists used to come to. It was okay. in Stone Mountain. Like, everybody used to come to. So, I remember just, I remember sitting down with 50 Cent, like, having wow. conversations. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really even had no job title. Like I never worked a day in my life So they was just really trying to change my life You know what I'm saying So I was mm -hmm. just there like You had no job too. Nah You know you what I'm saying Just hanging out Yeah you know Just yeah. whatever Helping whatever. your uncle out Yeah Whatever you, know what you need Whatever you need The you muscle me? if I need to be <laughs> <Better believe it. laughs> You know what I'm saying So eventually I said Like I want I, I want to start doing music Yeah You know what I'm saying So I'm like I'm not really used to this type of lifestyle. Like, I got to wait on certain things, and, you know what I'm saying, I got to wait, I get this money to do this, and I ain't used to living like that. You know what I'm saying? No patience. But I'm really trying for my sister because my sister has always been my backbone, my heart. You know well, what I'm she, saying? Did she move with you, or she's, no, she stayed home? No, my sister, all, my sister, after college, my sister moved to Atlanta first. She always, yeah. Oh, so she moved to Atlanta first. Yeah, when she Atlanta. graduated, she moved to Atlanta. You know what I'm okay. saying? And she just been there. Um, and uh, long story short, you know, um, I, at this time, I had got this manager. You know what I'm saying? His name was Laco. He from New York, so he was a real hustler. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm the saying? Niggas, they built different. Oh yeah, he took me to New York. I used to hang in Yonkers with the Locks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All, all them DMX, all them. Like you feel me? Like he yeah. used to have me around them. Um, and at this time, like the Locks wanted to sign me, but they was going through this situation with Puff. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we left New York, I was like, man, like, I gotta, I gotta do something. You know what I'm saying? So. I eventually left Atlanta, went back to my hometown, got back in the streets, you know what I'm saying, hustling, you feel me? And uh, I started doing music full time. Okay. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, serious like, about it. Yeah, like this is what I want to do. So I started recording, you know what I'm saying? Um, and my homeboy was like, well, that shit, that was raw. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I was really like, you know, talking it, you feel me? And they know who I was, you feel me? So at this time, I only had two songs. I had a song called Represent. And I had a song called My Block Burn with Pastor Troy. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the the Represent song and the My Block Burn song got on fire. The Represent you did by yourself. Yeah, Represent was my solo song. But that one that one with, how did you Pastor set Troy. up something with Pastor Troy? You yeah. already knew it? Nah, I just paid him to do a feature. I paid oh, Lil Jon for the, the nigga, beat. the nigga down in Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just got in touch with somebody that knew him. Yeah, so yeah, I'm on the rock with him. Yeah, so at this time, uh, on, I know, I know you, I'm sure you heard of TJ Chapman. Yeah, yeah. The TJ DJs. Yeah. He took me under his, under his wing and like start taking me everywhere. Thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And telling everybody about Blood Raw. You feel yeah, me? Like yeah. this the next dude out of Florida. So I had this dude, this other friend um, who used to manage the producers Justice League. His name Chuck. You know what I'm saying? He was work Justice League was working with Jeezy at the time, but Jeezy was signed with Jazzy Faye. Okay. You feel me? Jazzy yeah. Faye and the Puff Daddy situation with um Boys in the Hood. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that was So they was on. telling they was telling them, you know what I'm saying, this cat named Blood Raw from Florida, he next. You know what I'm saying? So me for coming from Florida, I used to go to Atlanta all the time. Like you said, the strip clubs. Yeah, yeah. And we used to see each other in the strip clubs, me and Jeezy. Like, you feel me? They throwing money, we throwing money. Like, yeah, you feel me? Yeah, Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all handled them niggas. <laughs> yeah, some nights, some nights, nigga. I mean, some yeah, nights, we, had it, we definitely had it down. They, they felt you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, who are definitely. them niggas? Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, hold up. When Never. men come into a strip club and y'all throw money, is it a competition yeah, thing? Hell yeah, hell competition. yeah. Definitely competition. Who can throw the most money? Who Definitely can look the flies? Definitely, co yeah, all that. All Everything. that. We got that. It's an ego thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We want to show niggas with it. It's up. always an ego thing with men. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real, for real, everything a man do, he, he want to score points. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, whatever he do, he want to score points. What are points going to get you? A lot of it, things. It's going to get you a lot of things. <laughs> it, 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 that's right. It, 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 yeah, yeah. It's going to go. It's going to have you feeling real good inside the better way you can't it. nobody stop you. Yeah, better As believe you it. keep being a creative successor. Exactly, yeah. Man, nigga, please. Better believe Whoever it. Whoever come yeah. there, they going to get it. You sit over there, you yeah. getting it, dude. Better believe it. Better believe it. <laughs> better believe it. Thank you so much, man. Better believe it. Okay. So, go ahead. So, so, so long story short, like, I got on fire in the state of Florida. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and what I did with the Represent song, I I, I, I want to talk about this because the Represent song came back to bite me. With, mm. You know what I'm saying? With my federal case. So, long story short. So they got you on your on what you were saying in the song? 
Well, the dudes that I named in the song testified on me. Damn. Oh. But I was using it as a lot of the dudes was my was my people. Like they was my homies. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Um. But what I did was I said I'm gonna name everybody in my city who getting money because I know that if they hear their name in a the song, they gonna promote they gonna my song. Promote it. Mm-hmm. I'm the first out in my city to ever do it. Like to ever be on the level of anything musically in my city. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That's good stuff. I'm talking about almost. The only other person from my city, in the in the in the, in the um, that made it out of my city was Will Witherspoon. He played okay. for, he played for Carolina Panthers. He played for, mm-hmm. you know, a couple different teams. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about a real street cat, like from my city. I'm the first that ever did it, so it was a big, big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I named everybody in my city that was was getting money. You feel me? And you know, everybody, they followed suit. We was going to homecoming. We was going to classic. Everywhere in Florida that was going on, we was there. I probably was 20 deep. All my homies, like, you feel me? Yeah. Everybody in, 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 in fixed up cars, jewelry, money. We go from the from from the events to the club. We throwing money. We doing whatever. And, I'm, and, and my niggas, they passing out CDs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I instantly, like, it was, it was, bro, it was seven, eight months before I got my deal. Yeah. Like, like, fast. You know what I'm saying? So I remember we was in Dothan, Alabama a particular night. And Dothan, Alabama is probably an hour and 20 minutes from Panama City, from Florida. It's, it's, it's at the line. I was on fire in Dothan, Alabama. So I had a show, and Jeezy had a show. He had just dropped Streets is Watching. Mm-hmm. I remember that. At my show, it was packed. At his show, it really wasn't nobody mm-hmm. there. You know what I'm saying? Because he was fresh. You feel me? So they came from their show to my show. And when they came to my show, I was going on stage. My son Represent came on. That word, was crazy. Word for word, they couldn't believe it. Messed their head up. They couldn't believe it, like, you feel me? He instantly came on stage, him and Kink. They pulled me to the side. You feel me, Kink, like, man, what you wanna do? You know what I'm saying? Keep in mind at this time, I'm already getting offers from Universal, from Jazzy Faith, from Trick Daddy, from T.I. Like, diff, all these different people is trying to, you know what I'm saying, hit TJ Chapman about me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I tell you, we exchange numbers. Jesus get on the stage. He like, boy, this nigga blood raw, raw. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So um, we exchange numbers. Kink hit me up. He like, man, come to Atlanta, man. We want to sit down. You feel me? So me and my partner, who I told you, who managed the group Justice League, the producers, Chuck, he take me to Atlanta. We, me and him, we fly to Atlanta. We sit down with Kink and Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's basically history. Like, you know, a couple of days later, we signed the paperwork. You feel me? Um, and how then we was that, though? Like, you, you, you just doing, you, you, you look at the paperwork, you trust him. Right, I'm trusting. You trust I'm trusting. Because that's what niggas do. Yeah, I'm trust. And keep in mind this, too, though. Did I'm, you read the paperwork? N- not like you that. Trust it. I, I looked over it, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, which most I people, trusted him. Most trust. kids don't. Yeah. Most people no, don't. No, no, but keep this in mind. Keep this in mind, now. It's already word on the street that the Fed's about to pick me up. Oh. Dang. So I'm really, like, trying to get legal Some, right. before anything like you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. that was that was 90 percent of me signing you know what I'm saying yeah, uh-huh. yeah I trust I him it. of saying you know you come from where I come from you know what I'm saying and I'm with you like whatever you need to do we gonna make it happen that's what we went on you know what I'm saying Damn. um you know and, and and by God's grace it happened right you feel me um you know, so it fell right. Yeah, it fell, it fell right. It fell right. You know what I'm saying? Did you even have to have any issues with that legal part after that? Well, when I caught my when I caught my indictment, we left. We had just left. We had just left New Year's. Okay. Um, performing in New York Times Square doing the ball drop. So Jesus was about to go on tour in Europe, so, but we we was this the time though? Was this cold summer and all that out at this time? This before. This, this before that. Yeah, this before. Okay. So so um. He said he was like, man, we're going to hit Jamaica before we go to Europe. You feel me? OK. So I never had a passport. You know what I'm saying? So I go to the airport to get try to get my passport. Mm-hmm. You know, so they pull the computer, get my information. And the lady like something going on with the computer. You got to come back. You know what I'm saying? That's so I that's never th- it, I'm, I ain't thinking about nothing like, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't think about none of that. So they called me like two days later. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you could come pick your passport up. Mm-mm. You they, feel me? They waiting on you. So me and Slick in the car, we just left Walters. So I'm like, you want me to drop you off or you want to ride me? Like, now nah, I'm going to ride with you. So I pull up to the passport office. You already got an instinct from being from the streets. Yeah, like, what's something awesome. going on? We know. 
it's super dry, but it's a lot of cars in the parking lot. Like it's no <laughs> movement going on. It's no absolutely no movement going on. So I'm like, something ain't right. You feel me? So I back in. As I back in, I got a flip phone, a next tail flip phone. So I, I'm calling my sister. Like I say, my sister is my everything. Like you mm -hmm. feel me? So I'm calling my sister, and the phone ringing. She don't answer. You know, she ain't, she ain't answer. So I close it. So I get out the car. I'm walking up the stairs. The white lady come out the building. So she's like, what's your name? I'm like, my name Bruce Falson. You know what I'm saying? She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on inside. You know what I'm saying? She waiting for That don't happen. She's waiting for you. Yeah. So I'm like, I ain't, I'm still not thinking about not it, but thinking. my body is feel, is knowing something wrong. Instinct. Yeah. So I call my sister again, and the phone just ringing. As soon as I walk in, they rush from everywhere. Yeah. DEA, FBI, everybody, ATF, everywhere. Damn. You know what I'm saying? They rush. They grab my phone, close my phone. But, you know, then sometimes on next tell when you close it, the phone still be on. Yeah, yeah. So my sister finally answered, but, you know what I'm saying? She's she just you. hearing everything that's going on. Oh, she must have been so worried. Oh, yeah, because, you know, she ain't talked to me for hours later. She trying to find out what's going on, whatever. But they tell me I have an indictment in the state of Florida. You know what I'm saying? So I have to go through that whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I'm, I'm at FSP. I mean, you, what it? Yeah, FSP, FSP or USP? USP in, in Atlanta, the Atlanta Penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? So I'm there for like six weeks. You feel me? What G's in them? So you ever heard of I ain't know. I ain't heard from nobody at this time. I, I don't hear from nobody, just so my sister. Ain't nobody, they ain't even tapping in with you. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and I give them a pass for that part. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I go through that whole situation. My lawyer want me to stay in Tallahassee because at this time it's like 10, 12 people on my case. You know what I'm saying? So he like, stay in Tallahassee so nobody else get on your case. And then when you get ready for your trial, we just bring you to Florida. So I stay in Tallahassee a while. Then I come to Florida the week of my trial. You know what I'm saying? The week of my trial um, is just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. You feel me? So I'm, I'm in a whole nother mode. Like, regardless of me being a street dude, I always had my relationship with God. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Because That's it right there. He's always been with me from the beginning he when I had nobody. He don't never fail you. You know what I'm saying? Like I never I've, left you. I've never had nobody, no father figure or none of that. So I always had to talk to God as my hey, main man. man. That's good you know stuff right there. Regardless of the, the dirt I was doing. Didn't matter. I could be on the road trafficking. And you know, I'm talking to God like, you know my heart. Like, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm trying to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? He'll love you right through it. He'll love you through it, brother. Exactly. That's yeah. real talk. Yeah, for real, for real. I so, got a question about that. <clears throat> Because, okay, being a person who loves God, yeah. um, you know how we all know when we're doing wrong, mm -hmm. although when we're talking to him. Mm -hmm. When you're talking to him and you know you're doing wrong and you're asking him to make sure that you stay safe and whatever, do you feel guilty? Of course. You feel guilty. You know what I'm saying? You feel guilty, but it's like my reason, and it's not an excuse, but, but the only reason I'm doing this is for survival. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to always help people. I'm always be courteous. I'm always be respectful. I'm going to always, my heart is going to always be pure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing what I know how to do at this point. Okay. And the more that you love God, the more you're going to cut off the fat. Let me just right. say this. Everybody feel guilty. Yeah. It ain't nobody yeah. that don't feel guilty. Yeah. You ain't nowhere by yourself. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. That's the from the pastor to the deacon to the street minister right. to the evangelist to the apostle, all of them. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. It, to the person that's in the streets homeless, to the person that's in the drug house, right. to the person that's in the strip club. Yeah. Everybody have a feel. That's of what the guilt. conscience is, yeah. Right. That's what you're Meaning, meaning and, yeah. and it don't matter how right standing you are, there's something that you got that's going on with you yeah. that you amplify to know that it's not right. Right, yeah. So all that crap, mm -hmm. man, don't never stop. The Bible said, who can separate you from the love of God? Right, exactly. Yep. Nothing. Better believe it. So you can't get caught up in no guilt right. or nothing. Yeah. And that's for whoever it is. Right, of course. Yeah. God always with you, bro. Better believe it. So Better stop playing. It. I Better don't even play it. with that, bro. Better I ain't it. nobody yeah. for to tell me God don't love me. I don't care what I'm doing. Right. And, 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 and that's why... You know, I tell I tell my federal case story not to brag, yeah, but to show the power of God. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody always brought to bring up the ninety percent percent conviction rate, but they never want to talk about the two, the two percent. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? And the, and the ninety eight percent conviction rate only is because either you cooperated or you took a plea. You know what I'm saying? And a plea is a conviction, so that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like. People in the feds are so brainwashed, they have other people trying to brainwash you as soon as you come in the doors. 
Like, man, don't play with these people, man. Like, don't do this and don't, like, you don't even know my situation. Like, you feel me? Like, how did you flip it on them, man? I'm, I'm God, but I'm gonna tell you, like, I never denied knowing these people. Like, these were my homies, but they, they, they only trying to get their time cut. You know what I'm saying? They know that I that I'm doing something positive, and they trying to bring me in their situation. Mm-hmm. Which these was my niggas for real, but you know what I'm saying? I had to go through the situation in the whole week. Let me show you how God worked, right? And and he and he gonna show the world always that it's him. It ain't my lawyer. It ain't nothing else. It's him. You know what I'm saying? And these were the guys you talking about that you named on the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Man, there was so many people coming to the court. To they did, they did their testimonies for two days. The judge said, "Man, y'all done had enough. Like y'all, done, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all been doing this for two days. Like, you know what I'm saying? And 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 you know they even get on the stand to my. We just want to do the right thing. You feel me? But let me tell you how God works. So this is how I knew that. You know what I'm saying? Everything was gonna be okay. I had a, I had a, my spirit was so calm during my trial, bro. It was unbelievable. Like I have, I didn't have no worries. I didn't have no. None of that, you know what I'm saying? Um, so when they came back for del- deliberation, before they came back, my lawyer came to me, and he was like, because my lawyer, when he when you came, his name Cliff Davis, he just passed maybe like three years ago for mm-hmm. heart surgery. But um, when you come in his office, it says no snitching, no snitching allowed. He got that on his thing, <laughs> wow. like for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So and he was friends with my old manager for thirty years. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that relationship alone. Good stuff. Knew that he was gonna go to war he for me. Fight for you. you know what I'm saying? Um, but long story short, he had to relay the message what the what the what the, what the federal agent was saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He came to me. He was like, you know, you know, I don't like this. He said, but they keep asking me. You know what I'm saying? You still got one chance to cooperate. So I had my Bible and my son picture in my Bible. I said, this is what I believe in. You feel me? But that was just God showing me that I can't give him the credit. Mm-hmm. Even though he was a vessel, that's right. I can't get him the credit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that was one case. The second time, when they got ready for deliberation, it was a heavy set white lady. When they came in the door, she winked her eye at me. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That was another sign. When they said not guilty, the lady who do the typing on my mama grave, bro, she started crying mm-hmm. because she couldn't believe it. Wow. This was my judge first federal case. <laughs> This was my uh, um, uh, um, um, this, the prosecutor's first federal case. A lady. Wow. All these plays, you got to know this God because that God. don't happen in That's the federal it. system. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I try to tell people all the time, like you can't go off my situation because I want, I got to quit it. You got to understand the power of God and that He had a reason for doing what He did for me. Man, and you learned your lesson from this one. Of Man. course, I learned my lesson, but 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 even more. The lesson wasn't for me. The lesson was for people. People. Mm-hmm. The lessons for what he's doing right here, right now. Yeah, exactly. Saying that you can make it through no matter what. Exactly. When you got God when on you your side. God. You feel me? That's well, the message. But I understand that. But the reason why I said you learned your lesson, because with all the other times that you got in trouble, you still went back and did your same stuff. Well, let me, so say, let me say this. So that's the reason why I'm saying that. Well, I'm going to say this, right? I always was conscious of whatever I was doing in life. It was just my choice. You know what I'm saying? My sister come from the same household. Right. You feel me? My sister never done no wrong a day in her life. She you know what I'm saying? Them streets. Nothing. Like, my sister has always been my motivation. You feel me? To do the right thing. She always wanted to have me ahead of the game, even though she knew our circumstance. But when she made it out of college, she always wanted to make sure I was up on the fashion, make sure my credit was good, make sure I had credit cards, make sure I, you know what I'm saying? Everything on a positive level that you needed as a support system, my sister tried to place it in my life. You know what I'm saying? That's love. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Um, But my choices was my choices because the streets uh, has always been what I know. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I know eventually I would transition. You know what I'm saying? But growing up, that's, that's, that's what I knew. Let me ask you this. Did Jesus camp or any of those people come around at that point? No, like let me tell you, the only th- the only time he came around was when after I won, he called my manager. Which I get it, I get it, I get it too. You know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, what I'm saying? but this is what I don't get, right? Is when I was going to court, my sister needed my contract, so she went to the office to try to get my contract for them. They had her waiting for like two hours. 
You know what I'm saying? For your character, just to build your character. To show that I wasn't a local rapper. Like, I was really signed yeah, yeah. to a label, Def Jam Records, like Universal. Like, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? No, but they didn't come out. They had her waiting for two hours and then come out of the office. You know what I'm saying? But I eventually got it. You know what I'm saying? Not from them, but from the lawyer. But you feel me? Um, and that really, it, it put a bit of taste in my mouth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when I got out, he was like, he was in Vegas for the Floyd Mayweather fight. Yeah. And he was like, he hit he hit my manager phone. He's like, man, put Ro on the phone. So I'm talking to him. He's like, bro, man, I want you to fly out to Vegas. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, bro, I see you when I get back to Atlanta. I'm chilling with my family right now. You know That's what I'm saying? That's real. That's real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when I got back, um, we started recording and that's when I recorded my mixtape indictment papers with yeah. DJ Drummer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the mixtape got on fire. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I started doing shows. I was on the road doing shows and then that's when he called me and was like, you know, I want to finish this USC project. Like, project. I'm going to show you how to get some real money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop doing them shows. So that's what I did but and I came talking in. Talking about the shows, you had a van you was riding around in. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah I had you were doing your yeah, thing. Definitely. I had and, all and that you, before and, and it, But you still was doing that. Yeah. And you had a Def Jam deal. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So evidently, some the, you had to create your own wave or, or how does that happen? Well, like, I, did they put a budget behind you during well, yeah, that yeah, time? Yeah. How was that? Well, okay. So you see what I'm saying? I'm looking at right, the right. way you moving. Right. So I so so I did everything up until me get, getting signed to him. Once I got signed to him, then we went and did the USDA project. After the USDA project, <coughs> I was the first artist from CTE to be signed to Def Jam. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I did my solo album, which came number five on Billboard. My like the true testimony. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, they dropped the ball on my on my solo album. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I had um, Louis Bag at number 19 on Billboards, right? Um, so my 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 product manager, my A and R, Davon Washington, he was trying to go for me a top 10 record. You mm, know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and he was he was aggressive about it. Well, they didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they in in some way mysteriously he got fired. You feel me? Damn. So. A month before my album come out, I don't have no A&R. He the only person who know me because he got to know me. Like, he know my story. He know everything. Like, you feel me? So, I'm getting, I'm coming who to the- Who fired him? The label fired him, but it had Let's to be- Let's be real. It's got to be from, it had to be from Jeezy. You feel me? Because he was asking you, for more you, money. Did you think that he was- why would Jeezy not want to see you win, though? I have no idea. I can't answer that question. What, you think it was competition? Your ego, we just talked about ego. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, me as him at this time being my brother, you don't want to think that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to, you, you, but you the people brought around up. you. The people around you are going to always tell it how it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His actions are going to show how it is. You feel me? Um, so I just say this, right? I came to the to the um to the Def Jam building to do my album cover. So at this time I got Def Jam on my side. You know what I'm saying? Um Louis Bag going crazy or whatever, right? And as soon as I come to the building, I come in the door, we coming up the stairs, and uh they blasting, put on for my city on the ready. I mean on, on the um music in the building. Now I got my record going. And I done, and I done won Jeff Def Jam, you feel me? As soon as I come in the building, they got his record going, playing. So my sister called me all day. So I finally answered. She like, I can't believe this. I'm like, what's going on? She like, they played a Young Jesus record like 20 fucking times on the radio. You know what I'm saying? So she like, this is crazy. How could they do that? And you got a record that's building on Billboard. Like, why would they do that? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, that's real. So I'm like, I'm here you back. I'm Man. in the office. You know what I'm saying? So that's going on. So I'm doing my double XL interview. I'm doing my um, Source Magazine interview. You know what I'm saying? And me, I'm still trying to be positive because for one, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And I'm a hustler. I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? If I could get through the door, I'm going to be able to do uh, yeah. what I need yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I'm not even all the way through the door yet and this, and this going on. You know what I'm saying? So I, I go through that part. Then come to find out, they take my video and they say is that Louis Vuitton have a problem, so they got a BET won't play it. You know what I'm saying? Because of the Louis Vuitton. Now, I done seen Rick Ross, Ghostface, Killer, all these boys have Gucci and Louis and all in their video. You feel me? So that's the story that they tell me, right? 
So keep in mind my album about to drop. I don't have no video on TV or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they we agreed to do the record I had with Man and Fresh called Almost There. That was gonna be the second single. We're gonna shoot a video for it real Almost fast. Almost there. And pull it out. I mean, and put it out. Well, that never happened. You know what I'm saying? And uh my album come out. The week of my album coming out, well, the day of my album coming out, one of my friends called me in Florida. He like, bro, I'm, I'm in Walmart trying to get it. I don't see it. Mm. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So my sister called. She like, I'm trying to, I'm in Walmart. I don't see the album. Like, what's going on? So all these questions, I'm like, I don't got no answers. This is my first time doing this. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. So I call him on the phone. I'm like, bro, what's good? You call Jeezy. Yeah. He like, he like, he like, what's good, man? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um. Let me back it up first about the record he leaked. I mean, the record put on for for my city. He told me that Kanye West them released released the record. You know what I'm saying? He like, I know how you feel. You know what I'm saying? I felt like that when Jay Z them did that to me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, it's all good, bro. I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Cause I'm hustling. You feel me? So my album come out. I call him on the phone. So I'm telling him like, bro, like um, you know, people calling me. They like the album in in Walmart. Like man, you, like, like you for real. I'm like, let me hit, he like, let me hit you back. So I'm like, cool. So I'm at DTL doing my in store, mm-hmm. and um, he called me back. He like, bro. He like, man. He like, bro. Like, man, don't be mad, man. But Kink didn't print up a clean version. He like, this some bullshit. He always tried to blame it on Kink. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? I like, so here I am. You know how important having a clean version of your album at this time because DJs are not going to play it unless you have right, a, a clear a clean version right. especially radio DJs they're not they're not cleaning nothing they're going to get the album the clean version album and that's how they're going to play it exactly so you handicapped me right there off rip you know what I'm saying so it's like I can't believe it so I'm like I'm, I'm in tears bro did you I call King? no I ain't called King at this time because you feel me like me and King relationship then was cool, but like I said, me and Jesus was more like brothers. Like yeah. you feel me? So, so you in your heart still didn't feel like he might have did anything to sabotage your situation. I feel it, but I don't want to believe it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. I feel it, but I don't want to believe it. It's like with with your brother or some one of your homeboys, bro. You don't you don't want to look at nobody like that. No. Like ain't no way he could do this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's ri- like something else got to be going on. You feel me? So long story short, Damn. you know what I'm saying? I'm steady grinding. You know, at this time, I'm paying for magazine covers out my pocket. You feel me? I got my own publicist. You know what I'm saying? Kim Ellis. Shout out to Kim Ellis. But you got the deal still. But oh, you, yeah, I got the deal, but I'm still doing things on my on own because own. I know that I'm being handicapped, so I got to still right, trying to get through. Right. Yeah. Trying to make it through. You trying know what I'm saying? It. Yeah, you feel me? And, um, you know, by God's grace, I still was able to have a number five album on Billboard. Mm. But just think if I had... The, the, support, the support, the real support of what I supposed to have. The right infrastructure. You know Number what I'm saying? One. Um. So long story short, I got through that. You know did what I'm saying? Did you ever address it with Jeezy? Yeah, I addressed it. I addressed when it. When did that happen? Um. How long after it, that? After, after, okay, so keep in mind. Now, th- y'all, this, be, this here is when your album debut, and this is your everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 you you go through all of this and yeah. you know already these this these things have held you back. Yeah. And you finally got a chance. This after y'all done did all the party and hanging out, yeah. y'all kicking it. We used to live together, bro. Damn, y'all stayed together? Yeah. We had a we had a spot called a Thug Mansion, like big, big crib. You feel me? And this was before that or after that? This was bef- this was before that, like during this whole time. You know what but I'm that saying? was before. After, after, when my album came out, I, I I went and you know what I'm saying, and moved to my own crib. You feel me? But did you ask when you asked him about it? Let's get to that part. Okay, so I asked him about it. My sec. Okay, so my a second time. No, we was getting ready for my second album, album because mm-hmm. because L. A. Reid told Jeezy they dropped the ball. I don't want to hear nothing else but a Blood Raw album. So my budget was open for my second project, mm. but he was the only one didn't sign off. Jeezy was. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so. Uh, so that so, was our opener, wasn't it? Yeah, so Joe Barino, L.A. Reid signed off. He was the only signature that didn't sign off. You feel me? And he has to sign off. Yeah, he has to sign off. He got 18 months to sign off for, to, put, to put out an album or release me. Why do you think he didn't sign off? I have no idea, Did bro. Did you ask him? Well, we had this conversation of, you know what I'm saying, him never supporting me. Never been to my show. And then we met at we met at Gladys Night Chicken and Waffle, right? Right. Oh yeah, I've been there. So we met we met we met there, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we sat down, I told him everything that was going on. You feel me? Like how I feel or whatever. 
You know what I'm saying? And he was like, I never looked at it like that way, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, we gonna get this shit together. You feel me? Like, look me in my eyes. Like, we gonna get this shit together. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he gave me his new number, whatever. You feel me? Gave me a hug. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, when you get back to Florida, send me a record. I'm gonna jump on it so we could put it out to let people know, like, we good. You feel me? But at this point, he still didn't sign and you knew that he didn't sign. No. No, no, no. At this point, he didn't. It no, wasn't this. This, this, was before, this, was this was before. This was before all of that. Before the second. Before the second, the second budget. Okay, yeah. okay. So before you didn't the, know all of that, right? Yet. Yeah. Okay. This is when I had done just left. Like you feel me? Like right. I'm, I ain't you talking to nobody. You frustrated? Yeah, I ain't talking to nobody. Okay, like, you know you. what I'm saying? So he called me. We sat down. Whatever. And I told him. So when I get back to Florida, get ready to send in the record. I I call him to try to tell him that I sent the record, right? And his number off. Like it's been changed. You feel me? Like. Damn. <laughs> and that was supposedly be the new number he had given you. Yeah. Got yeah, you. Yeah. So, so you, you feel like he changed his number so he wouldn't have to deal with it. I mean, that's, that's the you, only conclusion. At some point, you got to start saying, okay, this happened, and it, it, two plus two equals four. Right. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm definitely believing that's like crazy. some crazy going Y'all had a hell of a run. When you think about Cold Summer, Oh yeah. that was the buildup, right? Yeah, yeah. That buildup is what caused all this other stuff to happen. Yeah. And when it was yeah. building up, y'all had to have some good time. Y'all was killing no, had, it back there at that we, time. Yeah, we had because it had, wasn't all bad. No, 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 no. We had, we had, man, we had probably the best times of my life. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we really, you know, we traveled the world. How was that white girl? How was that whole? How did y'all? I got to get into the intrinsic, yeah. the, the 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 details of that. Right. How was it doing that part? It was lovely, man. Um, it was lovely. Who, we set, was who fun. set that up? Who, who who named the album? Who who came up with this? We, we all did. We so y'all did, did it together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta get did. that part yeah. out. We probably recorded. We re, we probably recorded the album less than thirty days. Oh, y'all did that in thirty days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We woke up. We woke up. We partied. We came back to the studio, partied, and then woke up again. You know what I'm saying? Are you serious? Yeah, like we literally did it probably in, less in than Atlanta. Couple. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. And basically the uh, videos least, yeah. and all that, but they the Def Jam, they opened the budget up to you guys, right? Well yeah, we really up uh, to be honest, we didn't really didn't cost that much. No. Nah, no, nah, it didn't cost that much. You know what I'm saying? Um Um and at this time, you feel me, we got a whole lot of back flack for white girl. That's, that's what I know. You know I know. That was a hell of a song. <laughs> yeah. That was a hell of a time. We, we, we probably was the first people to get to get into the Me Too movement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking about Christina Aguilera. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like they was really on us heavy, and, you know what I'm saying? And, you what, know. what were some instances that happened with that that made you know that, damn, we we, we kind of walking a tight rope here? Oh, uh, when Jay-Z called us. Jay called you? Yeah, he called us. He called us. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, what is y'all doing? He knew y'all was on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we wasn't we wasn't talking about Christine Aguilera. You know what we was talking about. I know about. what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But they, you know, they didn't they didn't they didn't get it, you feel me? Um, but we had so many records on there, it really didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, we shot that on one and only white girl video, and then we shot the corporate thugging video. Okay. Which our film got no key put it together, and then they took it from no key and got somebody bigger to redo it. But no key really did all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that's basically it. Like it was a win-win for the corp for the CTE label. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's why they said they pre presented it as a mixtape, yeah, unofficial mixtape. But it was an album. It you was. know what I'm saying? You know, um, and that album really solidified me getting my deal. Like you know what I'm saying? Me getting my solo deal. Like Slick wasn't even signed to Def Jam. I was the only artist. You like just you signed to Def Jam, and they lost their label deal because of me. Like. They didn't do right by, by me. By you. It caused everything to crumble. It, exactly. It caused you God's child. Better believe Ooh. it. Better believe it. Yeah. And that's that, the whole that, game, that's right? That's pretty much was able, how I was able to get out of my deal, even though it was 18 months. Yeah. Which, in the, in the rap game, that's a long time. That's a long time. For nobody to not be able to deal with me. Like, I couldn't talk to no other label. I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going through this situation. You know, when you sign to somebody, labels, they're not going to, they can't, they can't touch right. you. It's kind of like sports. You know what I'm saying? You can't talk to Tom Brady. Another team can't talk to him. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that was just the whole situation. Like, they didn't even... Man. Let me ask you A lot this. of people's career died over 18 you months. months. A lot of people's career died in yeah. four months. In four, four months. months. <laughs> I want to ask you about moving around during that time. And I know the Gucci and Jeezy thing had happened. How was... How, did you guys... How did y'all... Did you ever have any experience where... 
you like, I can't deal with these people because, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm over here right. on this side and I don't even want to get caught looking that way. Right. Well, How, were those instances happening? Well, overall, overall, that was my brother, so I never really, I wouldn't ever put myself in that situation. Correct. So you was always with Jeezy. Oh, yeah, I was always 24/7. with him. 24-7. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this is the thing about it. Like, I've never Did you had know the issue. beef? You knew the beef was going on, though. Of course. I, I well, got I signed. Went on the, it, yeah, I got, when I got signed, the beef had just started. Yeah, because I talked to uh, DJ Ace, and he told me about how he felt like it started. You know oh, yeah. DJ Ace? Oh, yeah, I know DJ Ace. Yeah. 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 So it, ha it happened It happened literally when I got signed. You know what I'm saying? But the what thing about it, how did you feel about it, though? I, I need to know, because you step. It's your brother, yeah. but y'all got to move in a certain way in order for y'all to even keep this thing going. Let's be real. Of course, of course. But listen, man, like... We changed the game of how people move. Like, we really moved. Heard about that. Yeah, like, we really moved. We definitely was 50 deep. Gutter, Gutter TV <laughs> was on there, and he said that the way y'all move, yeah. he said that Jeezy would never get caught up in a situation ever. like Nipsey. Was. Did you see that ever. when he said that? Yeah, ever, ever. Like ever. Because of the way that y'all move and the way that y'all dealt with this situation, y'all yeah. would never ever get caught up in that. Yeah, we, we we had a we had a motto: you violate, we demonstrate. Damn, like it was just that simple. Like no matter where we went, no matter where we went, like you know what I'm saying. And the thing about it is, though, for real, for real, like everybody wanted to be a part of what we had going on. So it was love. It a lot of love. Yeah, it was it was love. No matter where we went, what? Cincinnati, Detroit, oh, I got Chicago, it. wherever. Um, so after you hadn't spoken to Jeezy after that time, yeah. did you ever, because you're going out, you're yeah. going to different places that I'm sure that he's also there at the same time. Nah, no, 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 we never seen each other. You never seen each other, spoke Bro, to each like other? I, be honest, yeah, I'm in Florida. I went out to Florida there. to be, you know what I'm saying? Even when I went out in Atlanta, like I've never, I, I haven't seen him in years. How many years has it been since you've seen Jeezy? It's probably since, probably 2010 to be honest. 10 years? At least mm, 12. 12 years, yeah, yeah, and you've been all over the city, everywhere. Oh, yeah, I, I, listen, man, I'll be everywhere. Each I be, other, no. you're outside. I'm here by myself, that's right. Like, <laughs> you're outside, yeah. I've but, always been this type of person, like, for real, for real. Uh, like, so, you haven't spoken to him, hadn't seen him, and you guys were like brothers yeah. living together and everything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, do you think that it's because of, of people, you know, deciding that that? It's better for them to move on because you got to realize uh, Jay Z did the same thing. Oh, I go there, don't play with me. Yeah. Jay Z moved away from uh, his whole team. Yeah, Bees. It was a time when he split the whole thing up, and they yeah. took this one and took that one. And Jeezy was managed by uh, wasn't he by uh, Jay Z? He um, was he was linked with him. No, so. no. Was he was he he was linked to him pretty good. It, yeah, it, 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 it was cool. That was they cool. Were just cool friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think it's something in the era to where people, once they get to another level, they want to go to the next level, they have to detach themselves from others? Well, I, I don't think not necessarily. I understand what you're saying. Um, they do that for, for people who still in the streets. Okay. But I'm talking about this is a whole, this, whole other situation. Like, I'm going to say this, right? If you can get on national TV and do a versus with Gucci Man. Yeah, that's something. Then you can't fix what happened with you and your brother. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wow, that's heavy. I ain't, you can even take me out of this equation. If you can't, you can't. You could get on national TV and fix it with Rick Ross, but you can't fix it with your brother King. Wow, who you say bought the mic for you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like it's just like the host. I don't. I don't, I don't, don't get understand it. it. I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Um. You know, and, and for me, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that I done right. Let me tell you something, man. Can't kill the able for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. For absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, yeah. For jealousy. Jealousy, yeah. yeah. It's a dangerous thing, brother. Yeah. You was telling me about scaling and you number five. And yeah. Don't you understand what's literally happening? Right. You understand? <laughs> I mean, the, the devil is busy, bro. Oh, yeah, And he's sure. real. Yeah. So I, and you just said that he can step on stage with who and do this with that and do that. But I'm a spiritual guy. Yeah. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, man. A divided house cannot stand. Right. So <laughs> so yeah. this thing is steadily going to be divisive. Even with the with the verses happening, do you think that changed anything? I have no idea. But bro. you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Like it didn't definitely. look it didn't look too right. 
it, it was a good look for the culture. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, did it mend the bridge? It nah, gave no, a look. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. So it's just all I'm saying is the devil. Now I'm not saying nothing about their business. Right. I'm just telling you the devil. Right. Of course. Is very busy. Gotta believe it. He love what's going on with you and Jeezy right now. Yeah. He love what's going on with what? What's the other one name you just named? Kink. 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 Yeah. He love that. Right. Yeah. He love that. That's what he do. Yeah. We got to be big, big enough to figure out a way to love through it. Gotta believe it. And it's not easy. No. If you saw Jeezy right now, how? What would you say to him? I'm. I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like honestly, if I see this, just. This is the crazy part because I already know how it's gonna go. It just, I know how it's gonna go because it just went the same way with him and Freddie Gibbs. Okay, like he just he like if, if we met each other right now, he would act like he would say, "Man, come on, man, what we doing?" Instead of saying, "Bro, I was wrong. Like, how can we fix this?" Oh, you don't think he'll even admit he'll, he wrong. won't do that? Like, that's the that's the crazy part. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. If I'd done something wrong, bro, I would be man enough to be like, you feel me? Yeah. Like, bro, I, I, I fucked up. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how can we fix this? And if we can't fix it, it's cool. But as long as I got that to you, that right. telling you that, bro, I messed up. You know what I'm saying? Wow. For whatever reason, bro, for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? I don't got no ill will against you. You know what I'm saying? I just, for me, it's about, you know you fucked up. And you know, a, a lot of times... The people that we've interviewed that had these issues with different things that happened in these over the years, it's a, it's believe it or not, it's a mental illness in yeah. there. I'm yeah. being real, yeah, because it's blockage, it's 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 unforgiveness, it's all type of things playing games to where people, not only you, even Jeezy, yeah. It's, it's blockage there, bro. I don't care how much money you get. Right. I don't care how many times you can fly out. Right. This thing right here is serious, bro. Better believe it. <laughs> yeah. And this thing right here even yeah. more serious. Oh, yeah. Better believe it. So, we, hey, it. he got to connect the dots. You yeah. got to connect the dots. Right. I love the... I, I'm a big Jeezy fan. For sure. I, I'm a big Jeezy fan. I'm a big fan of the whole CT movie. I'm a fan of right. the music, bro. Right. That's, why, that's our culture. Yeah. It's the most... Uh, it's the most powerful, powerful thing of yeah. bringing our people out of poverty. Right. Better believe it. You Better see what I'm it. saying? Better so I it. love to see the 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 Jesus, the Gucci's, the T.I.'s, the 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 Yellow Beezes, mm -hmm. all these different people uh, 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 scale it. Right. I love it, bro. Yeah. But I hate to see the things that causes us not to be able to connect the dots. But even yet and still, that's going to happen anyway. Yeah. Whether you're a celebrity or not, here right. I go again. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. are, there's issues, bro. Yeah. In our people, in our existence, the things that our people been through. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how you pretty it up, it's still going to be an issue there. I really think that. Right. But we still got to talk about it. Of these, course. these mics, like you yeah. said earlier, yeah. just the conversation has to happen. Right. The breakthrough happens in the conversation. Of course. But when there's no conversation, no communication, the relationship continues to die. Better believe it. That's why you say we ain't talked for 10 years, 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Because that's where the problem lies. Right. The communication is not linked. If you don't talk to God, what happens? Yeah. Better believe it. You're going to go out here and do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. you said, I talk to God, man. Right. And I, I, I be in bad situations. What if you hadn't been? Exactly. You would yeah. have been the crash that long, long time oh, yeah. ago in a big way. Better believe it. Right. So let's talk Better about the book. I was just about yeah. to ask him about Definitely. that. Definitely. Who did little boy on here? That's him. Me. Boy, stop I can it. Tell. Yeah. You look the same. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Man, I love yeah. this, man. So what, what what drove you to write a book, man? The story of your life, man. Um, Bruce says Fallers Jr., a.k.a. Blood Raw, man. Yeah. This is live, bro. Yeah, man. I love it, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Y'all can, can keep that, too. Fuck, I, I've never heard that last name. <laughs> Falson. Yeah. You see this? Mm -hmm. God speak. I love this dude, man. You gonna mess around and get flued back? <laughs> man, I love it, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro, you did that, man. Listen, yeah. man, where you came from? Yeah, man, your testimony power. I appreciate it, bro. I mean, for, real. for your mom to go to prison uh, uh, two times, yeah. die at the age of you, you was ten, 10. when she passed away. Yeah, right. but do you know what God did? Oh yeah, God, God did a lot, bro. I already know, bro. And then you you walked in it. Yeah. That's yep. where it's Everything at. happens yeah. for a reason. Even you meeting your dad the way how you did and been a, I know you wow. didn't spend a lot of time with him, right. but you got to spend some time oh, with yeah, him. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. There are people who've never ever been able to have that. Right, man. We had brothers on here who mom and dad got killed while they uh, was three months old. Yeah. Twin yeah. brothers. Yeah. It's serious, bro. They yeah. was an orphanage the whole been 
the, yeah, prison right. for a long time, yeah. years and years. Matter of fact, he, he write books too, okay. man. Okay, okay. But this is what we do, bro. Yeah. We love our people, man. For sure, for sure. I man, appreciate I hope it. we doing you justice on Boss Talk 101. Right, for sure, for sure. For the sure. bosses talk, oh, man. man. Yeah. But no, nah, man, you, yeah. um, you, you just an extraordinary dude, man, when it comes down to the culture and to the movement of what, 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 you know, our people need to see this right, right here. For sure, I appreciate That's it. That's what this platform was put here for. Okay. So people could see, man, mm -hmm. our people are going to mm -hmm. be all right, but we're going through some changes. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to yeah. be all right. I yeah. love the fact that you are, you, I just can't wait to the day that you do get to see Jeezy, that you do get to see whoever might have been in your life where you able to mend those those different things. But right. if not, right, 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 right. God's still the one oh, yeah, in control of this thing, and he the better one can make it. it happen or don't let it exactly. happen. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Better believe it. So what I, What top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Okay, okay, okay. You got to any genre. Right. Number one. Definitely um, Tupac. Tupac, he number did two. number two. Uh, Scarface. That boy's mm -hmm. <laughs> number Texas, three. Man. You know you in Texas? Yeah, of course. Did you do of that because you in Texas? No, 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 no. Anybody know me? Like, when I first started rapping, like, that was my, he was my, my influence. Nigga bad, ain't he, dog? Yeah, definitely. Can I, who can I? Definitely. Who's number three? Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy cold, Cause he too. Got a, he got a, yeah. he got a rap Florida. Yeah, yeah. but no, nah, I'm just talking nah, about nah, this. Nah, but, you know how I be telling yeah. niggas, I say, let me tell you something, man. Y'all be hollering Jay-Z, but if Jay-Z get in the booth, and I got Scarface, you niggas in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Definitely. It's gonna be some problems, ain't it, man? Definitely, definitely. Because a lot of people took their style away from Scarface, man. Of course. That movement, man. That yeah. movement was early on, bro. Yeah, better believe it. It was early on. Who believe started it. first? From who? Jay Z or Scarface? Jay Z was around, but he wasn't rapping like yeah, that. Yeah, he, he was he rapping was, different. I put it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. It wasn't definitely. like now. Yeah. Okay. No, I was no. just checking. I didn't but know Scarface, who came first. But Scarface? Yeah. You gonna get it every time. <laughs> you gonna get that story so Scarface right. Scarface been think, that think, rapper the way how he rapped from day one. Always. Always. Same, the same. same. Yeah. Hard with the stories, yeah. man. Hard with that's why I we call him the best rapper alive. I think Me and Mr. Lee, though, Lee said that. Music is a preference though. You know it what I'm saying? Is. So you know, it, that's why the argument will always be an argument. You know what I'm saying? On who the best. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now you're right. Who you liking right now? When you when you look at these, at our, and I and how do you look at the rap game? Now you come from it, right? Um, I I like a lot what's going on, man. I like a lot what's going on. A lot. I listen to a lot of artists, bro. Like Ooh. no, like no bullshit. You feel me? Um, <laughs> at last night, of course, I was listening to the little baby album. All right, you know all right. I'm, I'm definitely an NBA young boy fan. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because he wears hard on the sleeve. You yeah, know what yeah, saying? he does. Yeah. Um, I definitely was a Mo three fan. Like for real, for real. You was a Mo three fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I got my um, my um outside raw mix is probably like almost two million views. Ooh, like my raw mix is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I gotta, gotta go get that. Up. I gotta yeah. go pull that up. Oh yeah, you playing? I'm yeah. pulling that up tonight, nigga. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, but yeah, um, so are you what made you do it? You just like the way he? he yeah, no, nah, I love, I love, I love the way, I love the soul. You know what I'm saying? I love the soul. I love the pain. You feel me? Like I'm. That, that's the type of artist I am. Like, if you talking about the pain in the streets, like, you know what I'm saying? That's you're going right to get my attention. You. Yeah, you're going to get my attention. Wow. You feel me? And you could just feel it in his music. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how did you... This your mama in the, this picture right here? Let me see. That's my little nephew. Oh, that's your nephew. And who's the woman? Well, let me see. I didn't see it. I didn't know it was a woman back then. No, that's, that's the day of my mama funeral. This so who is, that, who is that? That little boy is your... Yeah. That's my, not nephew, but my cousin. And then the woman? That's a woman, right? No, that's me right here. That's not you. <laughs> you see my arm, bro? I had, I, that's from football. Yeah. Let me tell you the story about that, right? Let me see. My okay. arm was broke. My arm was broke, right? So, I was, I was, I had a football game, and um, I was running crazy. Like, I was running crazy at night or whatever, and um, I was, t I was just tired. So I laid, I laid down and act like something's wrong with my arm. Like I, on everything I love, I didn't know that my arm was broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but until they took me to the hospital and then that happened. Okay, what, what's crazy is we was getting ready for a championship. And I had the cast on and I told my coach that my grandma said I could play. You feel me? Like I said, my grandma used to work from nine in the morning to 10 at, to 10 at night. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody must have told my grandma that I was playing football. She took off work, came in the middle of the game. You feel me? And uh, called me to the sideline. 
told me, she, you know what I'm saying, I was finna get a whooping or whatever. Yeah, I was about you know to say. Whip the gas out, and, uh, So ain't and nothing wrong with the your arm. No, it was bro. It was bro. I didn't think nothing was wrong. But you out there trying I just to was play? Thinking. He wanted to play. He wanted to play. Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I still play. I, I was about to say you still play. Yeah, yeah, I still with play. With a broken arm, exactly. Yo, man, that's cool. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna read this book too. Yeah, definitely. Man, definitely. I just um, you know, I, I I definitely appreciate you for coming on the show, but like I want to make sure that I didn't miss nothing, didn't leave nothing unturned. Everything was solid. You know, Florida, Rick Ross. Uh, Birdman, mm -hmm. Baby Nim, you ever run into those guys? We was on tour with them before. Okay, how was that? Oh, it was dope. It was, it was dope. dope. Yeah, how we, them boys dope. move? They look a little. They look like they're ready for action. I mean, just the, the music wise. Are they. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But you know what I'm saying? Like they didn't really move like we was moving. Oh but, no, y'all moved different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they had they. You know what I'm saying? They had their people. Like you feel me? They they had they definitely had their people. And they was ready. You know what I'm saying, but they really, you know what I'm saying. They, you know, they, they really. I don't, I don't look at cash money as like being from the streets like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, of course they from the hood, but okay. I, you know what I'm saying. Like, they weren't doing what we was doing. Like, no, far as came in the game young too. Yeah, like, like, and and it was already the move. Some Birdman came in early. Yeah, y'all yeah. came in when it was already popping. Exactly, and yeah. so y'all exactly. came in that whole. Series. Like we motivated, we motivated niggas who was getting money. Yeah You know what I'm saying Like they was rapping Like you know what I'm saying Even though they from the hood They was rapping But we was motivating Street niggas like You know what I'm saying To want to come to the club And want to show their money And yeah, want to yeah. You know what I'm saying Yeah Like yeah Yeah y'all was motivating niggas to, Yeah y'all was kicking it too Yeah That yeah. white girl That thing was going crazy <laughs> nigga Yeah, yeah. I got, no, one, last, no, I got one last question Cause you said that Right before When you saw your dad The last time mm -hmm. You were going up there doing, Shooting a documentary Yeah my documentary Yeah What happened to the documentary well, It's getting ready to come out um, Already Yeah I'm just waiting um, Big Rube who, You know Big Rube You heard mm -hmm. of Big Rube before mm -hmm. Well Big Rube He narrating the documentary So I'm just waiting on him To turn it in And uh, we're going to put it out But the documentary man It's, it's like gonna go It's hard, unbelievable it? It's unbelievable bro you gonna cry it's watching it. Aren't you? <laughs> she want every nigga yeah. to cry, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. You gonna cry. No, you definitely gonna cry watching it. When I think about you that's the cry. last you time you're you in the book. book. You gonna cry you reading the book. Yeah. But when I think about yeah. that's the last time you really, you know, have footage of your dad before he passed away. Right. That's yeah. the part that to that's me is really, touching. That's touching. Yeah. But I really uh, what's touching to me is about his mom going to prison twice and then dying at 10 years old and he having the 10, 11, 12, yeah. 13 series years right there because y'all trying to figure out oh, yeah. what's yeah. going on and y'all already was, well, how long was she gone? Do you remember that or somebody told you when she went to prison those two times? No, nah, I remember. I remember she probably went, she probably went when I was probably like three for probably about 16 months and then when I was like seven, like two years. Seven or eight for like two years. I was happy when she came home. How oh was yeah, man. Like, listen, man. I was a mama's boy, like for real, for real. Like, listen, my mom died on Halloween, bro. Wow. Mm. She asked me before she went out. I was in. I never forget. I was in front of the TV, sit, sitting on the floor in front of the TV at my grandma's house. She was like, "Baby, I'm finna go out. Can I go out? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm coming back. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, you you good? You feel me? And uh, her and my my auntie and my uncle they went out. You know what I'm saying? That was just it. I remember the police coming to our house that morning, and guess what? We really kind of like they didn't tell they didn't tell me and my sister that my mama died. Like they just sent us to school. Right, I remember you said yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, you know, as a kid, I we could you could pick up on certain things. They're protecting you. That's really what it. Because I of remember course. when my grandfather died yeah. in the same house that I was living in. Yeah. It, at least your mom didn't pass away there. Right. Right. My grandfather died that day, and I remember them saying, you know sent us to school. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on and he passed away before we left for school. Right. It's when I came back, they got, I think for adults, they got to get their their composure and yeah. everything else to deal with the child. Right. So in order for them to do that, like, you know, send you away so I can grieve, I can do everything and be tough. So mm -hmm. by the time you come back home, I can deal with you. Right. And be there for you. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Right, 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 right. I got to ask them something. I'm going, one, this will probably be my last thing. <laughs> it's all good. I want to ask you about, the, about that Rick Ross and Jesus uh, situation. That was another thing that y'all dealt with. But I was gone then. But you was gone. Yeah, I was you gone then. You, so you and him wasn't talk. That was nah. before. So that's a part of the time y'all hadn't talked all that's that. After, that's after I left. They got into it later on. They yeah. sure did. Yeah. And and you was on the outside looking in. Yeah. You was like, yeah, it's going down. Yeah. And they reconciled. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I want to say Jay Z was a part of that for sure. Yeah, I think I think um, I think Khaled did it. I think Khaled or somebody did like. It? Khaled or somebody, some I can't remember who did it, but I know I, I I seen who did it, but I can't remember. Just happened, man. Like I said, that 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 like I said, I, I love to see everybody be able to do something on a reunion tour like Master P and them. They got it. Everybody they, they done done it, it bro. Everybody <laughs> figured it even out. Even Fifty did it with G. Fifty did it. Like you know what I'm saying? It's but G's like, the only one ain't done it. Yeah, but this the crazy part, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? It's no. It, like he gonna be who he is, you feel me? Like one of the greatest of all time, like for real, for real. Oh, he that guy. But his his legacy, you got to You you can't. You, he's not gonna have a real legacy without including us. Because for your legacy, you got to be done did something for somebody else to make you who you really supposed wow. to be. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't get it. Why? You know what I'm saying? Why? You know he won't even. From a business standpoint or or a legacy standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Say I'm gonna right my wrongs. You know what I think about? I think about that scripture because it, this is one thing that I I um read one time a long time ago. You know, like when you're mad at somebody, and that's why I know God talked to you in different ways. And you might can tell me where it's from. I don't remember where it's from, but it's tell you like if you have something, you know, with somebody else before mm-hmm. you go to God, you gotta leave your gift at the altar and yeah. go and reconcile you know with everybody before you come and present this gift yeah and when i saw that i'm like you know what i'm not gonna make nobody stop me from going where i need to exactly. go exactly yeah so even if you don't yeah. accept my apology or you don't accept anything i'm gonna set my wrongs right i'm gonna come to you and whether apologize whether i felt that you were wrong yeah but just because i know that you're mad at me i'm gonna be the bigger person and be like you know what I forgive you. You forgive, you know, whether you forgive me or not, you know, I'm asking for your for your forgiveness. Right. Forgive me for whatever that you thought that I did or, you know, whatever I've done. And whether you say, you know what, I don't forgive you, whatever. I'm like, okay, well, I, I did what I was supposed exactly. to do. Yeah. But yeah. I really feel that everybody out there, you know, should do something like that, you know, because we don't know the time that we're going to go. There's no, and we don't know when God is going to come back because nobody it. knows. Yeah. So why are you going to go knowing that somebody might be mad at you or you might be mad at somebody? Because I've heard it so many times where girls, not men, but girls, you know, girls be mad at each other or whatever mm-hmm. uh, and don't talk for years. Right. Thinking that, oh, we're going to make it up one day. We're going to oh, make yeah, it yeah. up one day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden that person is going like, oh, I thought I had more time. Yeah, that's the How worst many thing you can do is think you that. got time. Yeah. How many, I thought I had more time to reconcile. Why are you waiting for that time? Why not do it now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of it, and, and a, a lot of it is hard to see too when you're a fan and you just on the outside looking in. Because I, I always have love Jesus movement, right? And, and then you hear these stories, these podcasts bringing everything out. Yeah, because people really telling you this is what went down with these situations. Yeah. So a lot of times you will hear this stuff through podcasting and stuff. You know, I wish it would have been a podcast around when pimp. I'm a pimp C friend. Okay, for fan. sure. Yeah. I wish I wish they had a podcast. Oh yeah, he would. He, he would have been so on fire. <laughs> I wish that you know that you know people they love drama so he you know what I'm saying he gonna talk it <laughs> I wish they had a, a yeah, damn he, gonna, he, he definitely gonna talk it he yeah, definitely gonna talk yeah, it yeah man him and Jesus yeah. it, it was said they had a little uh, run in he said some things about seventeen five and y'all you know the, y'all hey, it was some niggas setting off some dope prices oh, yeah. man yeah, that was questionable mm-hmm. man it was some questionable dope prices man <laughs> you in Texas nigga yeah. it was a questionable <laughs> It ain't, it, but I'm saying though, this the thing, right? Go ahead. It ain't what you know, it's who, who you, know. you know. Well, you got, yeah, you got to come down. You, we go to the valley down here. Got Used to you. back in yeah. them days. Yeah. Yeah, we get down by that water. Mm-hmm. Y'all by that water a little bit too, though, but we yeah. deep down by that water. <laughs> 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 man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk. Oh, yeah, man. for sure, for so sure. How can people sure. get all done you if they're trying to uh, link with you, book you for show, do media? something with you, babe? Um, you can get at me on Instagram, Blood Raw One, the number one. Blood Raw One, the number one. I got a new album about to drop called. Let's go! Yeah, called Back in the Trenches. Mm, you know what I'm saying? It's you crazy. love that music, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and I dropped the, I dropped my, my first album being back because I took a six year break. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I didn't do music for six years, like for real, for real. I kind of depression. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Depression. Um, not well. It's a form of depression, but you know what I'm saying. For me, I just was kind of like, man, this shit ain't real. 
You know what I'm saying? I used to so real. Times, I but it's, it's, it's real. It's true what you he's saying. Yeah, so yeah. you know what I'm saying? I kind of like it, but but you know, my fans, man, I got some of the best fans in the world. They in my inbox. They text message. They That's call me like, you know what I'm saying? And telling me what my music do for them, wow. what, it get, what it get them through, wow. niggas in prison. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um, I came back and I did the Hush Project, which Hush stand for hustling to something happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's on all platforms. Go get it. But like I say, that back in the trench is going to be crazy. Let me ask you this, man. Do, crazy. You, do you think it's... Uh, you gonna give me some visuals on all of it? I oh, think yeah, a nigga supposed to get yeah. visuals all yeah, everything. Doing, yeah. Everything supposed to have visuals. Yeah. Now. We doing we doing we doing crazy visuals I'm on tripping, this new right? album, man. But like these the, the DSLRs yeah. out here, these yeah. cameramen, we supposed to see this thing. Yeah, better believe it. Better believe it. And I do the type of music that you gotta bring to life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. people wanna see that, like, damn, what? He was talking about that for real. You know That's what I'm saying? Real. So yeah, we 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 definitely doing a lot of visuals. Um and the book, you can get it on Amazon. It's on Amazon, it's on Kindle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go get it, man. You feel me? Man, go get that boy's book, man. That boy, yeah. hey, this man got a story. His testimony is touching, man. It's going to help some people. Yes, That's sir. what it's all about, man. He showed up, man. Yeah. Love Raw in the building, man. Oh, man. Check it, man. <laughs> hey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Oh, man. And we out. Man.